Hey everybody, happy Monday. Now today's question is, why do mental health professionals feel like they have to know everything? And I really, really love this question because it caused me to reflect on my own process and how I am with my patients and with you. And I have a lot of thoughts about this. And my first thought is that this urge could come from us feeling responsible for you getting better. Meaning we feel like we have to fix everything that's wrong or whatever you've come to us to quote unquote fix. And this really says that we don't have healthy boundaries. And I've talked a lot about this, but I think many people don't understand the boundaries in therapy. So I'll briefly go over that. When you come to see a therapist, I know it can feel really weird, but you're not supposed to know anything about them. Yes, I mean, if they're pregnant, you obviously can, sh you see that, it's there, you know. Or if they wear a wedding ring or mention their husband or wife or partner, you're gonna hear about that too. But it should be very, very minimal. You shouldn't know if they've been in therapy themselves or if they're their other spouse or if they've been divorced, the other spouse is an alcoholic or you shouldn't know all that about them. Every once in a while, a therapist can share their own experience as a way to empathize with you so that you really know that they get it. Do you know what I mean? And so it can be a way for us to help you in your process. Everything that we share should be with you in mind. And so therapy really works because you share what's important and what you want to work on and the goals that you're working towards. And then I, or any other therapist, helps kind of guide you in the right direction. We ask questions that can get to maybe the root of the problem, or we ask, you know, kind of other questions to try to best navigate through to even figure out what's going on. Does that make sense? We kind of just ask a lot of questions so that we can get down to what's truly happening and help you heal it. But we can't work harder than our patients. And that's where this kind of comes in, where there's no boundaries. It's like, I can't be putting in all this effort and striving to make you feel better because I don't have that kind of power. I can't make anybody get better. We all know this, right? All we can do is check in. I can be there. I can support when you need to. I can give you some tools and things, techniques to use when you're out of my office, but you have to want to do the work. I can't do it for you. And so I feel like some therapists may feel like they need to know everything and do everything because they, they've taken on that responsibility when it's actually our patient's responsibility. Now, my second thought is that this could come from us being too confident or egotistical. I actually find this more, and I'm not like calling anybody out by name or any type of mental health professional as being bad, but I find this more when it comes to psychiatrists, MDs, meaning medical doctors. A lot of them, because they spent so much time in school and they usually did really well in school and they are like the top of, I mean, it's the most education that in, in the mental health professional realm that you can get to, right? That's like as high as you can go. And so I think sometimes people in that level can be really egotistical or overly confident, thinking that they know everything. And that honestly, is kind of icky and usually we can feel that in session and that might be why this question was asked is because their therapist or psychiatrist or psychologist or social worker whomever tends to act like they have all the answers but i just think that this kind of is bred out of the personality of the the type of person you're seeing and that's why it's really important to make sure that you like your therapist you feel like they get you they're not making these horrible assumptions or talking throughout the session that's also a bad thing is if your therapist talks even if it's not about themselves, if they just like try to fix your problem and talk it through and you barely get to talk, that's not good. You're supposed to share information. We're supposed to ask, you know, kind of guiding questions to get you towards what we think the answer is. But if you're like, that's not working for me, we try something else. And so it's really important, I think, for all mental health professionals to, to be humble and to know that their patients are the teachers and we're kind of the student and you're, I'm the student of your experience, right? You're teaching me all about it and being too confident or egotistical could lead to me thinking that I have all the answers when in truth, my patient has all the answers. I just know how to take what they've told me and offer some helpful tools and tips that might work for them. But again, they only know what works for them. So I'm going to offer all the things I have in my arsenal so that I can see what would work. But at the end of the day, the patient is the expert. And my third thought about why a therapist could feel like they have to know everything is that they could worry about you having confidence in them and needing their patients to validate or affirm their own insecurities. 
And this really just goes back to a video I created a long time ago about why I think all mental health professionals should see their own therapist or other mental health professional. Because what that reeks of to me is like counter transference or some kind of transference, depending on what's going on in the therapy session, it's kind of hard to pin that down, but I shouldn't as a therapist be working out my own ish in session. That time is yours and it is sacred. And it's the one hour or 50 minutes that you get each and every week to talk about your own stuff and not be interrupted. And so a therapist may come across as like feeling like they know everything because they want you to feel confident. And I really think that this reason would be born out of their desire to help and their worry maybe, or their own imposter syndrome. But again, stuff that they should be working out on their own. Why are we having to deal with this? We shouldn't. That's why I see a therapist. So I keep my own ish out of my sessions, you know, cause it doesn't belong there. And my fourth, cause I, like I said, I have a lot of thoughts. But my fourth thought about this is that they may need the money and want to keep you as a patient. And that's part of the reason why I've actually never done private practice full time. I don't know if any of you know that. I've always done it just as an add on to something else I've been doing, whether I was working at the eating disorder treatment center, I used to be a per diem um, around, there was a local hospital chain in LA, I, three different hospitals I would attend to every week. I ran groups, things like that. I've run other groups on the side with other colleagues of mine. I've done a lot of different things. Now I do YouTube as an add on, but I do that all because I don't want that direct relationship where you see someone for an hour and they pay you for it. I don't want to ever feel like, shit, if I lose this patient, I can't pay my bills or my rent or let's say, you know, can't get groceries. I don't know because bills keep coming. We all know that. I never wanted that to be it. I always wanted to have another thing going that was a little bit different that paid the base of what I needed. And then all the money that I made from my patients in my private practice was just icing on the cake, which allowed me to take clients um, at no cost or a lesser cost, you know, like the sliding scale I've talked about. You can always ask them if they do that. And so I feel like some therapists may pretend they know everything or act like they have all the answers because they wanna keep you around because maybe they need the money. And that's an unfortunate potential side effect of this whole thing that we call therapy. And my fifth thought, I've kind of touched on this a little throughout the others, but we could not be taking care of ourselves and dealing with our own issues in your session. Like I talked about, like imposter syndrome or working too much, symptoms of burnout showing through. If you remember, I did this whole series on burnout, but some of the symptoms are irritability, struggle with sleep, they can begin to resent their patients. I mean, we talked about burnout comes from nurses at a free clinic in New York in 1974, I think it was, 72. Dr. Herbert Freudenberger, he coined the term burnout because he was seeing it in his nurses. And so you just think about that. And I think that that's why it's so, so important that therapists see their own therapists because we don't have all the answers. And especially, I can't therapize myself, I'm sorry. That's just not gonna work. It's like a surgeon trying to operate on themselves. You can't, it's just not right because I can sidestep all of those questions that I'd rather avoid, or I can pretend something's not a big deal because I'm not ready to deal with it. And you really need a therapist to kind of push you through that. And so that's why it's so important if we are in a job of caring for others in any way, we need to first care for ourselves. And so that could be one of the reasons why whoever asked this question is feeling like their therapist or other mental health professional is just kind of overly confident pretending like they know everything. And finally, and this also includes like all of the above, they may just suck at their jobs. Not all therapists or other mental health professionals are good at what they do. Not all people get into our line of work to help people be humble and let our patients teach us, guide us and show us where they want to go. And so just keep that in mind, just like any other job. And I know sometimes it's hard to consider like being a therapist as a job or a career path, but it is. And just like you can get a shitty haircut or you can have someone come over to clean your carpets and they only do like three quarters of it or any number of things, right? We can go to a mechanic and our car turns out worse than it was. People can suck at their jobs and therapists unfortunately are not immune to that. And overall, the important thing to remember is that mental health professionals are people too. We can't know everything. We can't specialize in every mental illness or read your minds. That would be really helpful, but we can't. But with the right therapist for you, 
you'll know this. You can tell them what's going on and what you want to work on, set some goals together and work towards them because no one said therapy was gonna be easy, but they did say that it would be totally worth it. I hope you found this helpful and I would actually be interested in your thoughts. Do you think I covered all the reasons a therapist could feel like they have to know everything? This was really fun to think about and really great reflection for me. So thank you for asking your wonderful questions. If you have any other thoughts, leave them in the comments down below and I will see you next time. Bye.